Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of St. Pally Rising. And Rising is exactly what we hoped to do this month. Now, of course, we do have the live com game coming up against Union Berlin. And if you remember from the previous episode, they were actually 13, so they've fallen a little bit in that meantime. But the question is, what have we done in this month to try and deserve to be in the battle? Or are we still in the battle? So, first game of the month was against Ingolstadt. Now, I'm going to try and get through these as quickly as possible because obviously we've got the live comment. I don't want the episode to run on for too long because that's what you're here to see, really. But basically, uh, a Benjamin Hubner own goal was enough to give us the lead against Ingolstadt. And then Halstenberg's great free kick gave us a second goal not long after that. And then we kind of just faded out. Like, we weren't all that great in this game. Like, we kept a lot of possession, but we just basically... I mean, they only had, look at that, 5% there. We kept a lot of the ball and we set ourselves up very, very well. I mean, it wasn't exactly uh, an awe inspiring performance, but the point is it gave us the win. And that's three games in a row now without defeat. Seven points from a possible nine. Not bad. Next up, though, we had Greuter Fort and we just couldn't do it. We just couldn't do it. Like, you might think, well, 2 1's pretty close. If you look at the scores, it, yeah, maybe. But when you look at this, we weren't even close to that game. Yanis uh, Wurtz early goals. Like, we, I set up very defensive for this game because I knew uh, that Foot were going to come at us. And they did. And, unfortunately, they scored two free kicks. And they couldn't break us down, but they scored the two free kicks, and that was all that was necessary. And, unfortunately, I had to go for it a little bit after that. And I changed my entire strategy the moment they put the second one in because we were already 2-0 down. There's no point in being defensive. Halstenberg actually scored a free kick for us then and got us back into the match, but it wasn't enough. And, unfortunately, that really did leave us quite adrift in the league. Because that was the key game. Next up, we had Dusseldorf. And oh, yes. We did it. This is only the second time this season that Dusseldorf have lost. And it's to us. And look who popped up again. Bernd, uh, Bernard Nerig. He scored the winner against Kaiserslautern in another cru crucial game. And he's popped up again, our fullback, with a winner. This time against Dusseldorf, who, again, had lost one game this season and absolutely trounced us, although not on the score sheet, when we played them away from home. And as you can see, their stats, to be fair, a lot of this was them pushing for it. Because once we scored that goal, I parked oh, I parked an entire motorway full of buses. Like, that was like the M25 at rush hour, full of buses. And, it, yeah, they battered down the hatches for the last few but no, it wasn't enough, and we were able to scrape through with a 1-0 win, but that was huge for our chances. And then we went to Bochum, who was sixth in the league, bear in mind, and won 5-0. I don't understand how that happened. I mean, when you look at the stats, you can see perfectly how it happened. And I think I just got my tactics for this game absolutely spot on. I was well happy with it. We changed a few things and sort of stood off them a little bit and said, come on then, you break us down. They couldn't do it. They had a couple of chances. They had one click-up chance and we had uh, seven. And um, so we probably could have had more goals. We also had two goals disallowed for offside. Soren Brandy had two goals disallowed. So he actually could have had himself a haul. Um, and Bookman got two, Brandy got two, and Rakowski also got one. I think he opened the scoring for us, which was from a great free kick. Uh, I just didn't expect the game to go the way it did. But the point is that helped our goal difference dramatically and meant that two wins on the bounce... No goals conceded. Spectacular. Then we went, well, we were at home to FSV. They were bottom of the league. They're atrocious. But we only scraped a, nil, uh, a one all draw with them, I think, in the away game earlier this season. I was determined not to let that happen again. And it doesn't matter how many goals you win by in these games. It's just that you win. We were a lot better than them, and we deserved to win. Haruna Babangida gave us the lead early in the second half, but then Mark andre Kruska with a stupid goal. One of those ones where the corners played in, it's headed away. They play it back out to the corner taker who just whacks it in and it goes straight through my goalkeeper's legs because goalkeepers don't appear to use their hands. They just try to save everything with their feet, it seems, on this game. The goalkeepers are broken. Uh, but then their goalkeeper proved just how broken goalkeepers are by bundling one into his own net, which gave us the win late on. And I was very, very pleased with that. We just sat on it at that point. Nice and happy. I think it was... Oh, no, I think we might have actually gone 2 nil up in this game. Yeah, just right before that, we'd gone 2 nil up, and I was cruising. But when they got on back, I just parked the bus, because I didn't want to sacrifice the result for the sake of, you know, goal difference, really. We wanted to make sure we got the win. And this is where the league looks, how the league looks now. Now, we are a lot closer than we were 
Dusseldorf are still flying away. Though they have actually lost a game. I believe they lost to Nuremberg away from home, which is a pretty poor result for them. But we've opened a gap now over Kaiserslautern. We're seven points clear of them. I think fourth we can probably get. I'd say we can get fourth this season. But we need to do better. I want to try and sneak into that third spot and get in there ahead of Greuther Ford. We're two points off them, and we're only four points behind Red Bull Leipzig. So if things go our way or don't go our way, I don't know. We'll have to see how things go. Today, Dusseldorf are playing Heidenheim, and we are playing Union Berlin. So I'm just going to quickly show you the stat updates before we get into things very, very quickly, because I don't want to drag this on for too long. 13 goals now for Soren Brandy, and Haruna Babangida has 7, which is awesome. Top assists, obviously that's Rakowski, with 13 now. Most player of the match is Soren Brandy with 5, he's been superb this month. Brandy has actually been very, very good at leaking out the play as well, so fair play to him on that one. Yellow cards, obviously Nerik now has 14, he just cannot stop fouling people, it's stupid. Most red cards, obviously only him. Average rating is Dennis Dow, but Nerik is also up there because of the amount of goals and assists he's got. He's a little bit like what, um, I think it was Augustinson or Salomonson during our Gutterberg save on Football Manager 14, although they were better than him in terms of their goal returns. So that is that. We're going to get into the match preview. I've set up some stuff already, but I'm going to just make a couple of quick changes before we get into the game. So let's see how, right, so, oh shit, I should have looked at that. We're away from home. They're a poor team. We should probably push, I'm just going to... Since we're away from home, I'm not going to close down so much. I'm going to just let them have the ball sometimes. We're going to we're going to set to retain possession. This is something that's worked for me the last couple of games. Is just letting them have the ball a bit. Sticking and keeping our shape is quite important. So we're just going to do a little quick bit. As you can see here, look, despite all those wins, morale is still terrible. And that is a result of those stupid team talks that still... Obviously, nothing's been changed because there's not been an update. But if they don't fix that in the next update, I'll be really, really annoyed because it's ruining the game at the moment because you can never get good morale. We're fourth in the league with a team that should be sort of struggling in mid-table. And yet everyone's massively pissed off because, because unfortunately, I'm not allowed to field 36 players in every single game. Hmm, who'd have thunk it? Anyway, I'm actually pretty happy with that. We've got a lot of injuries again as usual. Actually, we've only got Bubala out, but we do have a lot of players that aren't match fit unfortunately, and like Mayer, Dauber, uh, Pini actually got himself an appearance for us recently, that's how desperate we were for players, that our striker, our backup, backup, backup striker had to play left wing for us, so that is probably what I'm going to go with for now, oh, do I fancy Babangida, no, actually, I don't think, oh, actually, yeah, I do, I think I'm going to put Babangida in, instead of Gurlitz, because he's been playing so well lately, he's been getting so many goals, I'm going to put him in, you'll notice that we've got um, Onwuzu on the bench as well, who's not played a single game for us, yeah, that'll probably do, I'm actually quite happy with that. Let's let's go with that. Um, I assume he needs to get a squad number, so we'll just auto number. Oh, it's two of them. And Bergman as well. This is what I mean about our desperation in terms of uh, players. We've had to really rely on this. We have had games in midweek this week, so that's why we've got slightly knackered teams, and which isn't always great. Now then, let's get into things and um, let's see. Oh, I trust your advice on this one, bro. We'll just let him do that. Let's do the team talk. Some green now. Let's get a bit more green, shall we? Come on. Be happy. Think like Pharrell and get happy. Uh, yeah, okay, that'll do. Right, let's get into this and just see how we can do in this game. I mean, I apologise if it's a little bit jumpier than usual. The reason for that is because one of my videos didn't render properly. And I'm having to upload it in the background, which means that obviously I've got to have Chrome loaded. And Chrome is a ram hog. Brandy's through already. Soren Brandy makes it 1-0 to St. Pauli in the second minute of the game. And that would actually put us back up into third place, which is an amazing start to the game. Oh, couldn't ask for better. And now, well, let's have a look. Just Brandy is such a good player. If you're looking at doing a lower league save in Germany, pick up Soren Brandy. He is a little bit expensive, but he is prolific one on his day. And I'm mega, mega happy with him. Right, so that's a good start. Remember, we battered Union Berlin in the home game. So hopefully we can do something a little bit similar. They're having a few chances now, though. Um, but maybe... Oh, right, here they come at the other end. And Schauner is able to collect the ball relatively easily. Now, we may have done that. We may have scored that early goal, but we're actually under quite a bit of pressure here. That is a great clearance from Schauner. Halstenberg bringing the ball down the left wing. Can he just whip a ball into Brandy? Just get that ball in the box. Ball across and Haruna Babangida at the far post. And it is 2-0 to St. Pauli. What a ball. And what a goal for Babangida. And that is why I like him in the team. He gets in at the far post a lot more than Gerlitz did. He is prepared to make those far post runs. And that is perfect with the style of play we do. What a goal. What a ball from Halsenberg. And that is 2-0 to St. Pauli. And we really don't deserve to be two goals to the good in this game, to be honest. But 
it's working for us. Unfortunately, I've had these sort of 2-0 games quite a lot in Football Manager, and we tend to draw them 2 all. We, where we score two goals early on where we probably don't deserve to and it just ends up coming back to haunt us and you end up losing the game. Somebody marking through the middle there. Kohler's got the ball. It's queering in the middle and who is marking Paradson? Just stand off. Just don't let him win the ball if they put the ball in the box. Somebody get out to him though. Just let him take a shot then. Oh, oh no. Oh, come on. Okay. So, you know the thing I said before about how goalkeepers are broken? I think we're going to see a pure, a pure example of that as physically possible it's a ball here goalkeeper saves it uh, uh, I mean it's not the worst example of it but Jesus goalkeepers are awful on this game they really are horrific I presume this is where they get the equaliser because that's what always happens when I get to 2-0 leads in this game uh, no we've managed to clear the ball thank god for that we do need to change something though I'm, I'm just trying to work out what we need to change um, well okay we'll do that for a start Let's have a look at the instructions. Maybe we should close down a bit more. Um, they're not really getting in behind us. But I think if we close them down, we might be able to stop those crosses coming in. Because that seems to be where their danger lies, is from crosses. So maybe this will help a little bit. But we've got the 2-1 lead at the moment, and that's good to see. It's just a question of whether we can hang on to it or push on for more. Because unfortunately, I can't really sit on a 2-1 lead with half an hour play. That's a good ball inside the fullback. Bookman now, oh, he's taken a poor touch and pushed it out wide, but can he get a ball in for Brandy? No, he's just lost the ball entirely. Uzbek, don't let them counter on you. you can win the ball back here, that'd be amazing. Oh, terrible. Um, but unless they can do something drastic with it from here, we're pretty much set. We are pushed quite high up the pitch, and I don't want to get caught out. Again, they've got a man free over on the left, but... Oh, that's it. Well done. Kringer is able to win the ball here. Brandy needs to make a run, but Babangida's got the ball. Unless he can slide it through for someone. Uh, it's Nerig. Ball on for Tribal. Tribal. What a save. And the follow-up. And probably the follow-up after that. A few good chances there for St. Pauli to try and make it 3-1, which we probably should have put at least one of those away, but Tribal is not that kind of player, unfortunately. I'm hoping that by closing them down, we can force the issue a bit more. We have sort of come back into things a little bit. Halstenberg to whip one into the box, and it's pumped away easily. Don't let them counter on you. Oh, Jesus. Queering is through here, or quiring. Just tackle him. Tackle him. For the love of God, tackle him. Oh, Jesus Christ. And there's your two all. Because apparently in these games, when you go two up early on, you always go down two all. It just happens. That's every single time now. I've had these two all early... Two, two nil up early in games. You always seem to draw two all. I don't know why it is. Or they just go completely... Why didn't he make the tackle there? And oh, It's a good strike in the end. But that's really disappointing that we started so well and just buggered it up. But... Okay, they're getting balls over the top. We're going to have to drop deeper. Because that's getting a little bit silly now. Uh, Skribaski. Oh, don't score another one. <sighs> God for that. We are going to have to drop a little bit deeper in this game. We've really ruined a chance there. We were so close to... If we could have got a third there, we might have killed them off. But they're actually playing very, very well. They've obviously got their safety on the line here. So hopefully if we can drop a little deeper, we should stop them getting in behind us. And now that we're closing down a little bit more, it's... Oh, God's sake. Um... Is he... Yeah. How long did he take to get up there? He looked like he was on the ground having a picnic. We're under quite a lot of pressure here, and I'm really not sure what to do about this. Um, do you remember those games where you just cannot seem to work out what you need to do tactically? Like, sometimes it's pretty obvious because they're doing certain things. We've dropped deeper, but they're still having the chances. And they're getting in behind... There's not getting behind... Ah, they're still getting in behind, even though we've dropped deeper. I can't drop too deep, because then that would just allow the pressure. What can we do tactics-wise... What can we change? Do we switch to our defend tactic? Try and catch them on the counter? It's an idea. Let's see what we've got set up here. Drop deeper. Yeah, we're already doing that. Close down less. That, I don't know. That'll stand off. Be more disciplined. <sighs> Maybe. Let's try it. Babangida's not great for that role, though, so I may have to bring him off soon and probably bring on Gurlitz because he actually can play at right midfield. Babangida is definitely a more forward-thinking player unfortunately what is that and why is it glowing red they definitely came on to us in the second part of that second half and i don't know what they changed but we need to do something here hopefully we can be a bit more solid and not allow us like if we use the two wide midfielders it might allow us a bit more defensive cover rather than getting caught up the pitch too much it's been very very slow start of the second half here Oh, they've got a corner. Watch them head this straight in then. Or goal mouth scramble, perhaps. And, oh, it's gone straight in. Oh, for Jesus sake. <sighs> One click-up chance and they've scored three goals. 
Um, do we throw caution to the wind here? I'm starting to think we might have to. I don't think we've got much choice. We're going to have to go back to that, and I might have to just throw it onto overload because that is, I, I cannot see. We just have to dominate. We have to put the pressure on. Um, let's make some changes here before I do that. And oh god, who can we even bring on? Like Gurlitz, yeah, we'll bring him on anyway because Babangi. But look how pit knackered Rakowski is. I don't think we've even. Where do these guys even play? Centre back. He's a right-sided player. I don't want to bring on Budimir, but we may have no choice. No, Brandy's not tired. Sobiek, maybe. Bring him on for Gunto. He's looking a little bit tired, but I'm not really sure what else we can do in this situation. We've got a really poor bench, and I probably should have fixed that myself. We're going to go overload for the remainder of this game and push up really high, because I'm just going to try and squeeze them a little bit. Maybe don't work the ball into box. Maybe go shoot on sight. But also overload. We're just going to have to try and throw everything at the wall here and see if we can nick a 3 all draw. I can't believe we were 2-0 up in this game and have fucked it up. It just seems that when you go 2-0 up in these games early on, you always lose or draw. I've never actually won a game where we've gone 2-0 up early on. Genuinely, in either of my saves so far. It's happened twice with Pompey and this is the, the second or third time it's happened to me. But obviously not in a live comp, so you're now understanding the frustration. But obviously it's, you know... I'm not, I can't blame the game, obviously, entirely. It's just that that does seem to happen every single time now. Like, there's way too much swing when they make changes. Like, you could be winning a game 4-0 and dominating the game in possession and shots, and they change one thing, and it always seems... Suddenly, they end up, like, battering you for the entire second half every single time that happens. It's too easy to change the game. Like, tactical changes have way too much leeway on the result, it seems, but I, I don't know. Maybe we're just not very good. Come on, guys. We've done enough to get a draw here, I feel. Oh, don't let them score another one. Right, get the ball clear. Why did it take three of you to clear the ball? Please play out to the right-hand side. Bookman looks long to Michael Gerlitz, who's got some fresh legs. Right, get that ball in the box. You you shoot, I literally will injure you. And it's a good clearance, actually, in the end. But we've got them penned in now. Kringer. Yeah, in your own time, son. Thorant. Gets it out to Halstenberg on the left wing. Halstenberg can put some killer balls in. But instead goes to Rakowski in the middle. Get it back out to... There we go. Halstenberg. Right, we need one of your best here, son. Girl it! That's gone in the net, hasn't it? Yes! Ten minutes to go. Michael Gerlitz equalises. And Halstenberg's crosses. He has got... I don't know what his crossing stat is. But this lad knows how to cross the football. My God. Whipped in beautifully. And Gerlitz is in there at the far post with a big header. Nearly kept out by the goalkeeper. I'm not turning off overload. I'm still going for this. I'm going to keep pushing. Brandy. Brandy. Oh, yes. Lassie Sobiek. What a turnaround. I don't think Union Berlin can handle this at the moment. But the question is, do we sit off? Because they're going to push at us now. Or do we just absolutely park the bus again? Great strike there. And Sobiek is able to put it into an empty net. I don't know what to do here. I'm worried. I think I'm just going to leave it on overload. I'm going to keep pushing at them because at the moment, they don't know what to do about it. And they don't really have a lot of room to make any tactical changes currently. So I might just leave it on overload for now because it's got us to this point. Oh, that's poor. Unless we've got a player down there. We actually do. Sorry, I couldn't see. Bookman gets the ball across and Soren Brandy nearly makes it. Oh, he's offside anyway. Very nearly made that 5-3 uh, to us. Come on. What a win this would be. Union Berlin 3, St. Pauli 4. You can't see me right now, but I am like a dog with two dicks. I am the Cheshire Cat of Hamburg. Wow. And that's what I mean about tactical swing, tactical changes having way too much. Like, yeah, okay, obviously tactical changes are going to have an effect, but it just seems that if you make one change, you suddenly become the best team in the world and vice versa. If you, you know, I guess that's a bit like how real football works, but what a turnaround. Like, just wow. So we led 2-0. They then went 3-2 up and we won 4-3. Okay, so aren't you glad I live com this game? Uh, yeah, if you've enjoyed this live com, leave a like in the comments. Leave a like in the comments, that makes no sense. Leave a like on this video, bloody hell. <sighs> wow. I'm enjoying it again a little bit, thanks to the results like that. But they do still need to sort out those problems. And Dusseldorf drew with Heidenheim. We're actually only eight points off the top now. 
Could we do it? I don't think we can. But we've given us. Oh, pardon me. I'm really gassy. Given ourselves a real chance at a strong finish in the league. And I'm going to wrap it up here before we run into ridiculous lengths of time that will take hours to render. So, if you guys have liked this episode, which I really hope you have because I've massively enjoyed this one, then please feel free to leave a like on the video. And if you liked it even more than that, hit that big old subscribe button that will be floating like a blimp in the top right hand corner. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye bye.